We are live right now. It's the Total OS Today show on the terrific Linux distro community dot communism. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> That's dot com, you lame brain. <laughs> Spatry, why am I thinking Russian? I have no idea, but, uh, you know, it reminds me of a Russian knock-knock joke. You want to hear this one? No. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just kidding. Knock-knock. <laughs> who is there? They're the ones who ask the questions. And I'm the one that will say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Comrade Spatchy, comrade, could you please describe topic of tonight's show, please? Yes, it is the Sunday Night News and Nonsense Report. Courtesy of the Linux Distro Community, a wonderful place where everybody can get together and discuss technology. It doesn't matter whether you're running Windows, Linux, Macintosh. This is the place where you can interact with other people and get the answers you are looking for. Thank you, Voltem, for having us. And... Why don't I go ahead and start us off? YouTube introduces face blurring tool to protect protesters. Do you know about that one? No, I, I didn't catch that one. So what's up with that? Well, apparently now, uh, as the governments are becoming more and more powerful and using means to crush protests, is becoming harder for activists to stand against suppressive governments. YouTube has become a very powerful means for citizens to provide video coverage and footage of events. But now governments are using these footage to identify protesters and take action against them. There is no way a protester can hide his identity and escape the wrath of the government. So now they have this little tool where if you upload an image, you can blur out pictures of people's faces and that sort of thing uh, in those videos. Very interesting stuff indeed. So now we're going to call it, instead of YouTube, spy tube. <laughs> just a thought, just a thought. I'm not giving any suggestions to any governments. Hint. <laughs> You're a bad, bad man. A uh, horse stable to you. Anyway, um, well, I have some big news. Well, it's the big news, I guess, for Google is that the Google Nexus 7 tablet apparently is a big big hit you know for 199.99 quad core processor and all that goody stuff but there have been some reports spatry that there are issues some issues with the display something about the response of the touchscreen and something called backlight bleeding i'm not sure what that is but maybe spatry if if it's bleeding maybe you can send google some of your arch band-aids <laughs> it's funny we're going to be talking about arch here in a little bit though uh but uh it, but um screen bleeding i've never really heard of that that's where uh maybe an image and that sort of thing you're like seeing posting as you're like rolling around on the screen that sort of thing and yeah i mean if but you know if, let's face it folks you get what you pay for if you're going to spend you know um a, a little a, amount of money on a piece of technology I cannot expect it to be able to uh, give you perfect results and that sort of thing and speaking of uh, technology uh, how's that new tablet of yours luckily I had uh, I had bought the um, the insurance on it so I'm okay to go uh, thank you for mentioning that Spatry the best pal of all <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is an inside joke. Total OS today bought a new tablet for what ninety nine bucks off of Walmart dot com, <laughs> and uh, he he's out in the garage. He's ready to take his tablet with him, and he was on his way to the store to go buy a case for it, and it fell out of the envelope. He had it in, and the screen went. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing a a drop test for my next video, and uh, needless to say, he didn't pass the test. <laughs> Goodness great. Yeah. What else? Though? <laughs> so, what else have you got in the news there? Well, I came across some news. A a technology firm, security firm, is working on some kind of biometric shoes, and now it's it says here briefly that. This new lab is working to perfect special shoe insoles that can help monitor access to high security areas, areas like nuclear power plants or special military bases. 
Uh, I guess there are some kinds of, of sensors in the bio soles of the shoes. Now, of the shoes. Now, this, of course, Spatry gives a new meaning to, to the term. If the shoe fits, you go to jail. <laughs> You know, I could just picture, you know, okay, with these shoes, you're only allowed to walk in the red and blue zones. If you are caught walking in the green zone, you will get this 250,000 volt shock from your heels. <laughs> Look, I'm all for better security, but uh, I mean, if you're a criminal, uh, why would you want to wear those shoes in the first place, right? Well, some people just like the color. Interesting, but no, that's something. <laughs> uh... Hey, try those new Air Jordans. Be careful of the shock thing, though. It might give you like a little zip up uh, up your you-know-what, yeah. Alrighty then. You know, um, some news uh, just uh, hit my desk earlier today, and um, interestingly enough, uh, there's been a lot of speculation. I've been listening to some conversation. It seems as though, you know, um, a lot of people are suspecting that Arch Linux is trying to push away users, and that sort of thing, like with some bad updates that have been coming in. Well, now the new image. Um, for Arch Linux no longer has the N curses installer. Now you have to physically, manually type everything in, and that sort of thing. Now I did go on to the uh, uh, onto the uh, Arch Planet, Arch Linux Planet, uh, or Planet Arch Linux. I'm sorry, blah, 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 I can't get this right today. Yeah, and for those who think the new Arch install scripts are no longer the Arch way, uh, there is a list of instructions of the uh, of Arch Linux um, 0.1 published on in March 2002, and it gives you all the instructions on um, actually installing this. You have to make your uh, swap root partitions. You have to make your target file systems. You have to activate your swap partition. You have to mount your target root file system under MNT. You have to initialize the Pac-Man database. You have to add the file system package uh, to the system. I mean, there, there is a list of things, and this all looks like Greek to me, but what I think I will do is I'll go ahead and download the Arch image and try this out in a virtual machine and see what I can do with it, because apparently the um, Arch beginner's eye is beginner's guide is completely defunct now. They want the community to write up a new guide uh, for setting this up, and I'm probably gonna before I can even start an Arch Linux series. Uh, I want to make sure they have a complete beginner's guide for all the uh, new things that they're uh, doing with Arch. So uh, that may be a little bit of time while I uh, do some research and that sort of thing. Uh, right now, I'm still using Arch, folks, but I'm just using it for amusement only. I've got a handful of games installed on it. I've completely purged out all of my multimedia applications, and I'm just strictly using it just for laughs and giggles every time I go to the coffee shop and I want to wobble my windows and show everybody how cool Linux is. I have that. But uh, right now, I'm loving Linux Mint XFCE. Spatry, I tell you what, you know how I make fun of Arch and that it's not for newbies and your Arch band-aids, but, I, but I, I tell you what, I will not bash, beat up on Arch tonight. I won't make fun of Arch. How about if I give you a little bashing on Microsoft? Would, would, would you love that? <laughs> go right on ahead. Here we go. Now, this is a real news story. Okay. Uh, it says here, and I won't read the whole thing, but it says, Buried... Buried in the software that connects the Linux kernel to Microsoft's Hyper-V virtualization program was the following code string. And there's a string there. Then it says, are you ready? In plain English, this stands for Big Boobs. Not you yet. are teasing, right? <laughs> no, I am not laughing. This is an actual news story. That's why I'm telling you this. Now, obviously... Oh, my goodness. Well, they said this was embarrassing for Microsoft. No, really? But no, this is... I thought it was someone putting up a joke, but this is an actual news item that in Microsoft, in fairness, they caught it and they removed it. But 
Look, we we could crack jokes all night about this. I won't, but because you had issues with Arch, I thought maybe this might make you feel better. Well, the thing is, according to Armageddon, who's listening to the show right now, he's stating that that this code is in there about ten times. And I'm surprised that nobody spotted this, uh, or at least from Microsoft, that or their brainiacs uh, don't know how to read Linux codes or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 if... If this is Microsoft's way, uh, Microsoft's way of making Windows 8 appeal to to the wives and females, Microsoft, you're on the wrong train. Get off the track, okay? <laughs> Funny. I thought you would like that. But speaking of code, now you can also join the Open Source Initiative. Uh, the Open Source Initiative OSI is accepting applications for individual memberships starting immediately. Open source community members worldwide are invited, are invited to join OSI now at opensource.org slash join and help shape the future of open source. The transformation of the OSI into member-based organization is a timely and important step for the worldwide open source community, said Simon Phipps, OSI president. I encourage everyone to visit opensource.org slash join and take a stand for open source. Yeah, I think I'm going to go on there and sign up for that as well. That's got my vote. Cool. Well, let's see. Uh, Spatry, I have a little bit of baby technology news. Would you like to hear that? Are we talking about Raspberry Pi? No, this is actually something that actually deals with... Well, well let, let me just explain. Or are you going to talk about electronic diapers now? Uh, I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> oh, maybe for you, but not for me, no. All right, go on. Okay, well, I guess back in the 90s, there was a web-based company called Your Baby can read and i vaguely remember this because my son was you know was born back in the oh i remember that okay well this company touted that if you bought this the specific baby can read products it would allow your baby to learn reading even at the early age of three months old or six months old or a year old well apparently after all the complaints and lawsuits they are going out of business now look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, if we have any soon-to-be fathers out there, the best thing you can do to your child is just read to your child yourself. But as far as a baby reading, now look, Spatry, there had to be hints that this wasn't going to work. And let me give you some examples. If the baby was trying to read, say, Mark Twain and the baby throws up, that's probably a clue that it's not working. Or maybe if the baby was trying to read Mark Twain and starts chewing on Mark Twain and goes, mmm, yum, 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 that's probably not working. <laughs> or what about Shakespeare? And then the baby takes a dump. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's... I, I was just about to say... I'm just about to suggest that, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think Baby wants to read about War and Peace or Shakespeare or anything like that. No, 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 no. No, I have a vision of, you know, you picking up a copy of Tolstoy, show it to your child, and the baby goes, belch. That's the end of that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I, I don't know if you caught uh, last night's uh, uh, Zoo Crew episode. Uh, we were talking about gaming last night. And uh, one of the things that came up was Steam. And, of course, I, I've been one of these people since I've started using Linux. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, it turns out that Valve now has an official Linux blog. And, well, it's official. So now we can expect to see Steam coming over to Linux. Will that mean that any Windows game that they're offering on Steam will be able to work. I'm not sure about that one, but they do have a team that is working very hard to getting Steam ported over to Linux so that now we can get some nice gaming selections available to us. So that's good news for the Linux community right there. It is. Um, I, th I think it's a step in the right direction for people who want to play quality games on a Linux platform. Now, some of you, if not all of you know that I don't really play any PC games. My Xbox 360 handles all my needs. But, you know, Linux and gaming right now really, from what I see, really cannot compare to what, you know, a Microsoft PC has to offer or a 360 or even a Sony PlayStation. You know, I did catch some of your show last night. Another terrific show, by the way, as usual. Thank you. 
as usual on the Zulu Crew. But you know, from for my gaming needs, you know, I love my Xbox 360, and I gotta say this because Patrick, each time <laughs> I mention something about you know um, Microsoft gaming, you go, oh whoopee! Well, you know, <laughs> here we go because uh, well, Xbox yeah. is still banned in the U.S. <laughs> Probably not for long because uh, I'm sure yeah. a lot of yeah, I'm sure a lot of judges are going to hear complaints from their children and, and their wives are probably going to say please do something out my child is screaming but no um, Halo Four is coming out of course November yes and of course on the three yes on the 360 platform look I call it as I see it I have all the Halo games and this is I'm giving kudos to all the wonderful people who spend the many hours creating these games testing and putting out really a fine fine quality product and I suspect Halo 4 probably going to be the, the best of everything that I've seen if there are any Halo fans out there who, who listen to this Interestingly enough, uh, Armageddon also wanted to mention that uh, he read an article uh, today uh, stating that Intel is working with Valve to do Linux drivers for gaming on Steam. I just wanted to throw that one in there real quick. Well, I th I think that's terrific news uh, for those people who are waiting, you know, like I said, for quality gaming on Linux. Honestly, from what I see, it's probably a good, and maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion. To me, from what I read and see, it's probably a good five years down the line before you, you get to see quality. No, no, what I mean quality, you know, graphics and the story similar to what you you know would see and play on the halo game but look i think it's great you know i don't play games on pc but for a lot of people who enjoy playing games this is definitely a step in the positive direction what else you got well let's see oh yes a couple more things since i didn't have any zany ending last week and spatchy's like poo 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 um <laughs> Spatry, there was apparently. Boo. Oh, shut up! But <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to uh, help you relive the memory of last week. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh... Are you gonna, are you gonna go on to the zany news now? Because if not, I got one more serious article, and then we can go to the zany stuff. All right, here we go. Uh, apparently, there was an. <laughs> There is an unscientific study that young adults who go out drinking on the weekends, they are leaving their expensive smartphones at home and taking with them with them a prepaid so-called dumb phone to go drinking because they feel safer. Now, here here's the thing. If a young, <laughs> oh, you probably could see this cut, but here's the thing. If a young adult goes out drinking and he's not the designated driver, it's not going to make any freaking difference what kind of phone you have. In fact, if you're in the car driving and you're drunk, the real dummy in the car is not the phone. I just thought, yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, this is, this is a nonsense story that really doesn't help. If you go out if drinking, don't drive. Be a designated driver. The, the type of phone you have is not going to make any difference. I'd have to agree on that one, but the thing is, uh, I can tell you as a uh, recovered alcoholic myself, and I'd go out partying and everything, uh, I always brought my cell phone with me because I wanted to show it off. Hey, look how cool my phone is. I can run dots on mine and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, yeah. line on it, then goodbye phone. <laughs> exactly. They don't float too good. No, they do not. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, that that is kind of odd. I would think that people would want to. No, they do not. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, that that is kind of odd. I would think that people would want to bring their regular phones with them rather than having a just you know having having a crappy phone. But I guess it does make sense, especially you know at least at least the study has shown that you know um, that there are kids out there that are aware. That you know, hey, they end up doing silly stuff when they've been drinking, and so maybe uh, bring bring along uh, the disposable device rather than having their nice device. I mean, that does make a little bit of sense, but you know, and that and that 
and that is completely aside from, from driving. I know yes, yes, yes. a lot of you know uh, a lot of your uh, younger people out there, you know, that are going out for a night on the town. They go in groups and that sort of thing. If they want to leave their nice hardware home, yeah, more power to them. Yeah, that's fine. All I'm saying is, folks, don't drink and drive. Okay. Definitely don't. It's very expensive, and I I know that. I know that all too well. <clears throat> well, I found a news article um, on uh, Muktiware. Did Apple call Galaxy Nexus a stolen, pirated, and counterfeit product? Oh, jeez. Here we go again. Patents? Here we go again. That's right. Apple is stooping to a whole new level. The company is evidently scared of competition in the mobile industry and is using every legal means to kill Android. The same company which stole UI from Xerox, whose founder shamelessly admitted that they had been shameless about stealing ideas from other companies, is putting the Galaxy Nexus phone in the category of stolen, pirated, counterfeit, or infringing products. Apple used the above wording in a response to Samsung's complaint about the letters Apple sent out to retailers asking them to stop selling Galaxy Nexus and Galaxy Tab 1001. I'm curious if Apple sent another set of letters to the same retailers asking them to resume the sale of Galaxy Nexus as the ban has been lifted. <laughs> Spatry, I... I have a vision of judges all over this country taking on these cases and thinking, oh, geez, here we go again. Not another day at the office like this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, we already saw something like that not too long ago when, um, when you know, they were talking about the, the shape of the devices and that sort of thing, and then the swiping and that sort of thing, and the judge looked at the case and threw it out of court. He says, look. You know, uh, before you even had this patent, I had a device that could do this. And this is bogus. Get out of my courtroom, you know? Well, I have a solution. I think for cases like this, there is only one judge who is 100% qualified to deliberate on these cases. And he's not a judge, yes, but he should go to school to be a judge. And do you know who that is? Mr. Lovefinger himself, Linus Torvalds. Yay! Linus Torvalds for the win! Da, 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 okay, well, that's all I have. Okay, that's all I have, too. Well, we want to thank uh, everyone who is listening. Uh, thank you, Spatry, for another Sinner report. And you guys can guess. You're welcome. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. And you guys can guess who's the sinner and who's the victim on these multiple Sinner reports. These are always fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. These are always fun. We don't have script for these. You know, we tell each other the news right then at the start of the show. It's all spontaneous. And we love doing these. We hope that you guys have fun listening to these shows. Yeah. And thank you, all of you, once again. And thank you to Baltim and the Linux Distro community for having us. You can look forward to seeing us here every Sunday night at 9 p.m. And uh, it's my understanding you may be out next weekend, total yeah. rest today? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be taking a, some time off a week off starting fr Friday to spend time with family and stuff like that. Uh, I, right now, it, it does not appear I will be on, but I, you know, me and Spatry will keep in touch. If, if there's a change, I will let you guys know. I don't like to make any promises to say I'll be there right now. I will not, but if something changes, either Spatry and I will post an update and we will let you know. If I can't make it, Spatry is more than welcome to take over that evening to do a, to do a sooner report or whatever he sees, uh, you know, feel fit to do for the show. And you can count on the Sunday night news and nonsense report. We will be here, or I definitely will be here. Uh, next Sunday night at 9 p.m. And uh, so if you're not available uh, total West today, that, that's okay. Um, I'm sure that we'll still be able to have a really good report to put out for the masses and everything. And uh, it should be an exciting show, to say the least. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for listening and to everyone here on the wonderful Linux Distro community dot com, not dot communism. Gee, Spatry, you know what? You're always getting me in trouble. <laughs> comrade Spatry. And I will end the show like this, comrade. Uh, I will see all of you in the future. Goodbye. N Nostrovia. Da. Ciao. <laughs>